first step is to start beginning with awareness by people that these pressure injuries actually started in the operating room. There's a lot of people who say it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen to my patients, I've never heard of this before. And so there's a big bump to get over initially just to build awareness that yes, this wound started in the operating room. The second challenge to me would be getting the staff buy-in for the program. We really had to get across to them what a program like this would do for the patients. We also had to talk about the evidence behind the different products. So, you know, it was, it was difficult to sell, especially for the pre-op nurses, because it added more work to their day. And we ended up having to add um, a little bit more manpower, and we had to bring patients in a little bit earlier to get these assessments done and to get them done well. Administration has a significant role in preventing pressure injuries. Quality initiatives are usually very important to administration, but then again so is monetary issues. So it's very important to have buy-in from them from the get-go. I think the problem really is that the wounds that develop in the operating room are deep tissue injuries and they don't show up for 48 hours. And so there's a lag in time and at the end of the case, when the skin is inspected for injury, it's not visible, it's not there. 48 hours lapses, and now it appears that this wound may have started in the operating room, but there's lots of other things that have happened to that patient in 48 hours. And so it's even hard then to go back very, very clearly and say, yes, this happened in the operating room. One of the things I learned with working in the OR is a lot of these nurses and staff have done the same thing over and over for 20, 30 years. They don't understand why a rolled blanket or a rolled sheet won't prevent pressure injuries just like a foam dressing. So it took a lot of encouragement, a lot of research-based articles to prove to them as well as the pictures I showed them to prove that these pressure injuries were developing in their OR suite. The buy-in that's needed to make a pressure injury prevention program work in the operating room is awareness that these are significant injuries and if they go on to become infected can result in very serious post-operative complications which are fatal in some instances. And I, I think any program needs to celebrate its successes. And so if you have a very high risk patient who should have gotten pressure injury during that case for any number of reasons and didn't, celebrate that with the staff. Because all we tend to focus on are the things we did wrong. We need to focus on the things we did right.